Maybe you start the day with one, maybe even two or three. But have you ever wondered why the coffee you make at home doesn't quite stack up to the one you get from the barista? Well, maybe you're just using the wrong equipment. This picture here shows the origins of espresso. Talking 1901, um, the first, first patent was made by Luigi Bezzera, who came up with the idea of forcing water through ground coffee. He actually sold out to Desiderio Pavoni in 1906, and this picture actually is a trade fair from 1906, showing the original machines. Basically, these machi machines could only make 25 coffees per hour, so it's quite slow. So you used to go up to one certain barista, probably your favourite barista, he would express that coffee purely for you. I find that a lot of the machines, especially the older machines, you have to go back to Europe, and we love travelling Europe, and we've picked up so much, mainly from Italy and France. Uh, we've travelled a lot in Eastern Europe and picked up a few interesting items there, mainly Hungary and Romania. We've picked up some interesting things. There's around, I reckon, at least 200 machines. This one here is Boima. It's a 1965 machine. This group here, we're going to fill that little cavity there with water and then we're going to pull the piston down and then from there it acts as a little hydraulic system. It's going to squeeze the, the hydraulics down and, to express the coffee. These machines and even the older machines were sort of like on a timeline to perfection, meaning that I honestly believe that the machines today do make better coffees. I think mainly because of the consistencies of having pumps in place for temperature and pressures. My favourite has to be the Fayamina, a machine built in 1950. It's a domestic coffee machine. Basically the way it works is we take this lid off and we fill the cavity with water and from there slowly express it through, through, the, through the coffee. A couple of other things I like is that it's, it's a very rare machine. We did pick it up overseas in Italy, but a lot of these Fayamina machines, you never see it with the original knock tube, and it just fits there on the base, which you rarely see that. This machine here is quite a unique design. It was made around 1850 of French design. There's water in here, there's coffee in this side. Obviously there's a little flame there. And what's gonna happen is as that water evaporates and turns to steam, it's gonna lift up like that, this little snuff is going to take the flame out, that steam now condenses in here, turns to water, mixes with the coffee and it has created a vacuum in this side, it's going to now push it back over here to make it into a brewed coffee and then we just, there's a little tap here to pour into a cup. Well many people who collect coffee apparatus have the atomic, but what most people don't have is the original box it came in. and what the Atomic originally came with was the instruction manual. But the interesting thing about this original instruction manual is the sample of the grind that was desired to make the coffee from these machines. Probably the only rival of the Atomic was the Vesuviana. Vesuviana was similar with its Bakelite knobs. You put the water into here. It was probably one of the first electric, st um, electric machines. I just love the idea of everyone just coming together as a, as a community, as a cafe culture, to come and drink the coffee and enjoy, enjoy this place as a venue. The other good thing is obviously I can show my collection so people can enjoy it and share it. Ah, oh, Richard, so many very, very cool machines, lots of jealous collectors around Australia. But your collection goes so much further. This is another part of the collection. Let's start with tampers. Mm. I thought a tamper was a tamper and that was it. So why are there so many different types and sizes and shapes and kinds? <laughs> I think um, there's, of course, there's you, you got your, your novelty ones and then of course you've got your professional ones. I prefer something that's stainless steel uh, opposed to something that might be uh, aluminium. You, you're looking for a certain amount of weight in a tamper. It just helps to pack a coffee because uh, you want to put at least up, up to 20 kilos of pressure, mm. which will help in the brewing process for espresso. These, these are mainly for for espresso method. Yeah, they're, they're so expensive. You know, I'm going to get a, a retro one from the 50s or 60s. Haven't seen one. Yeah. Where are they? Probably in Italy. I think the original ones would have came from Italy. They call it compressore, uh, which means to compress, of course. Um, and I think they've only become really famous or really popular in the last 
up to 10 years. Mm. People say it's an art, but I think it's a combination of an art and science, mm. yeah. not only for espresso making, but for any of the brewing, mm. but in particular because uh, espresso has been so popular lately, yeah. espresso method. Well, speaking of art, yeah. <laughs> this tamper here fascinates me. Yeah, I call it a disco tamp, but it's got the old blue light, so <laughs> give it a blue light disco. Yeah, well, after a few coffees, you feel like you're in a in a disco. What about the, the skull one down the front? Is that just for your ultra cool barista? Yeah, look, uh, when I saw that one, I thought I've got to have it. See, on, on this show, you know, we, we, uh, there are a few kind of areas of life that are very prone to collecting, and they're, they're, they're all kind of activities which become accessory sports, you know. And this is a classic. I mean, look at all the stuff. Uh, yes. It's never going to end. I mean, uh, the thing that I, I, I got taken by were these. Um, coffee grinders. You yep. see, you do see those out at markets, but are they actually functional and worth getting? Definitely for a collection they're worth getting, and yes, they are functional. I don't think they'd be very good for espresso, but something like, something a bit more coarser, like um, a French press plunger, um, or a filter, and perfect for those. Something that's come from today's modern <laughs> world would be Mr. Brown Cappuccino coffee. And I noticed the tin's open, so you drank that. I did it off. You're a self respecting <laughs> barista. What's going on there? When you're in holidays, I'm moving, you're getting used to drinking hotel coffee, you know what I mean? So, Mr. Brown, mate, I thank Mr. Brown. I think I've got every version he's got there. So I'm, Cappuccino I be, in a can. Yeah. I must be desperate one day, but um, there's the evidence right there. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. It's got a cool little logo there. Oh, no, he's great. Good for camping. Mm. And the other thing I like about your collection is the, is the little espresso cups and sauce. Yeah. yeah. What is it about those? I mean, every time I see one at a garage sale or a market, I yeah. kind of have to get it. They get borrowed out of cafes from all around the world. You never know what you're going to see. You're never running out of them. And somehow there's that extra special dollop of design goes into a, a coffee cup. Yeah, I think it's like the maker's mark. The black grey cup that's there, uh, that was actually given to me from a friend, but I think it's just a really great cup. It's it's sort of like it's in ruin, a bit like um how, <laughs> how, how Greece is. Um, yeah. That's a great great piece. Uh, yeah. Look, thank you, Richard, for coming in and showing us your collection. So much fun. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, if you want to see some more of this collection, there is an extended feature on our website. So log on abc.net.au forward slash collectors and see what you can find.